Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going through exercise 1.44 from the Art of Electronics. And in this exercise, we need to design a oscilloscope probe compensation circuit. The question itself is quite long, and but the summary I've highlighted with the bold letters. So you can see we need to design a 10x probe for an oscilloscope that has a 1 mega ohm input impedance and a parallel 20 picofarad capacitor. So we need to put some components onto the probe itself to compensate out these components. In the book, we also have a figure, figure 1.139 we can use. And we have another value of 100 picofarads, which is representing the scope leads, which you can see just over here. And the compensation components need to be placed at the tip end. So this question itself gives us a bit of a clue in that we are using an RC in parallel. And we need to show what impedance the probe will present the scope when used together. So first of all, it is a 10x probe. So that means that any input voltage is going to be divided by 10 as it goes into the scope itself. So if it's a 100 volt signal, that's going to go down to 10 volts. So by using the information and the figure provided in the question, we can draw a simple representation of the circuit that we are interested in. So first of all, you have the oscilloscope input which is a one mega ohm resistor. So a non-frequency dependent component in parallel with the 20 picofarad capacitor over here. So you see that is a frequency dependent component. The lead or the probe cable is represented with a 100 picofarad capacitor in parallel with this in oscilloscope input. And then our compensation network is going to look like this, which is basically the opposite of what we have on this side. Our input signal I've represented with this voltage source over here. This circuit was drawn on LT Spice and the simulations will be done on LT Spice as well. So let's first of all simplify that model. So you see you had two capacitors in parallel. One was representing the probe lead and the other was representing the scope input. So two capacitors in parallel, you can add the values together basically. There is a solution in my out of electronics playlist that goes through the derivation of capacitors in parallel equation. So feel free to have a look if you need to. So you end up with a total capacitance of 120 picofarads on the system side. And obviously we have our compensation network on this side. If you wanted to simplify that further, you can represent this component with some Z value, basically Z naught I've called here. And you can represent these components with some other z value basically a complex value which i've called z comp on this side so this would be a very simple representation of this system or the system that we saw beforehand now to go through the calculations i've got four slides that are coming up but first of all as we know from the question v in is going to be 10 times the value of v scope as is the 10x probe so we can write this down so v scope is v in divided by 10 so the voltage at the scope end, which is over here, is divided by 10, the voltage that appears over here. Obviously, if you just look at it in the DC case, you can basically ignore this capacitor here, and you can ignore this capacitor as well. And then you can simply work out what V scope is going to be, or what R2 value resistor is going to be by doing the potential divider equation. But I'm going to go through it in a slightly different way so that we can calculate both the resistor and capacitor in one go. So doing the potential divider equation, but on the complex representation of the circuit. So on the last slide, we replace these components with their Z values or the equivalent Z values. So that's what I'll go over here. So V scope, which is the output voltage over here going into the oscilloscope is equal to our input voltage, which is over here multiplied by this resistor divide by the total resistance or the total impedance represented by this one plus this one. We know from the equation over here that V scope is equal to V in divided by 10. So we can replace this V scope with this side of the equation over here. So we have V in divided by 10 is equal to V in multiplied by the potential divider equation over here. So over here on the next slide, I've got the last equation from the last slide. What I'm doing now is dividing both sides by V in. So we're doing this side divided by V in and we're doing this side divided by V in. So you can see this turns to a one. So V in divided by V in. And then 
we also have Vn divided by Vn on this side, so that also turns to a 1. So our new equation becomes 1 over 10 equals Z scope, which is the impedance of this network here, divided by the impedance of this network plus the impedance of this network. Now if you rearrange this equation, we end up with this equation over here. So if you imagine multiplying both sides with this bottom or this denominator, you end up with Z scope plus Z comp divided by 10 equals Z scope. And then if you multiply both sides by 10, you get 10 times Z scope equals Z scope plus Z comp as you would get rid of this division by 10 over this side. So that is basically this rearrangement over here. Now you have an addition on this side and you've got 10 Z scope on this side. You can take this Z scope onto the other side. So you end up with nine times Z scope is equal to Z comp. Now filling in these numbers for the Z scope and the Z comp, we have two parallel components here and we have two parallel components here. So the total impedance of this is the parallel combination of the impedance of the resistor and the impedance of the capacitor. So the equation for resistors in parallel is one over the total resistance is equal to one over R1 plus R2 all the way up to however resistors you have. Obviously in this case we have a resistor and a capacitor. So what I've got over here is that the total impedance of this is equal to 1 over 1 over R1, which is this, and then it would be 1 over 1 over 2 pi Fc, which is the reactance of this capacitor. And it's the same equation for this side as well. So this is the compensation network, and this is the scope network. Now if we plug both of these equations into this equation over here, we end up with Z scope is equal to, and also bringing the nine onto the other side. So let's not forget that. So dividing both sides by nine, we end up with Z scope is equal to one over one over nine times R1 plus one over nine two pi FC two. So now just equating both sides of the equation because we have the same network, we can write down that R2 is equal to nine times R1 and C1, which is over here, is equal to C2 divided by 9. So let's plug this into our circuit on LT Spice. So obviously we have the parameters for these two components already. We need to plug in the two values for this side into our LT Spice simulation. And we can look at the results by doing an AC analysis. So this is the circuit. R2 is 9 times R1 and C1 is C2 divided by 9, so 120 picofarads divided by 9, which is equal to 13.333 picofarads. On the screen now, you've got the model for the probe compensation and the scope itself that I've built up on LT Spice. Obviously, I've put down the values of the capacitors and everything that we calculated before, so 9 meg resistor and the 13.33 picofarad capacitor. I'm doing an AC analysis from 1 nanohertz to 10 megahertz. So let's press simulate on this and look at the scope voltage. I want to change this to linear. I think it's a little bit easier to read. So you've got 99.978 millivolts. And if I look at the input voltage, you can see that it's a perfect one volt. So V scope, which is the output voltage, divide by V, V in should be equal to 0 0.1, which you can see it roughly is equal to 0 0.1. Obviously, there are some errors introduced by doing this calculation over here, just because you don't get a perfect number that I can type into LT Spice. What I can do, though, is increase this by a little bit so that I get a perfect calculation on this side. So as just this is just for the simulation. Obviously, this wouldn't apply for the question itself. So 126 picofarads divided by 9 is 14 picofarads. And if I do that simulation, you can see a perfect compensation of 10x on this probe, basically, and for all frequencies from 0 megahertz all the way up to 10 megahertz, you can see the frequency is perfectly compensated and that the effect of the capacitor over here is fully reduced with this compensation network over here. Now, if I was to like basically delete this, you can see how this affects our results. As you start to go up in frequency, basically the signal getting to your scope gets less and less, and obviously that's going to decrease your bandwidth.
So thank you for watching. Hopefully you liked this video and found it useful. If you have any comments for me, please leave them in the comment section below. Or if you have any suggestions for this equation or this question, please let me know. And if you want to check out more videos on Art of Electronics, check out the playlist on my channel. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.